Now, obviously, I'm not telling you guys to just go break up with your girlfriend or anything like that. Or if you have a solid woman in your life to just completely change it up all the way. But what I'm saying is uh, I've had so many consultations and talks with people where they go on semen retention and they realize that the women that they're talking to or the women that they're interested in are not necessarily the kinds of women that are going to be long-term relationship material. And it's because they're desiring this beautiful woman above a motherly type of woman. And so in today's Semen Retention Sunday episode, I want to talk about sometimes you just need to change your woman because of the unnecessary suffering. And because there's plenty of women out there. And believe me when I tell you that for every time a woman rejects you or anything like that, there's two or three more that will want you down the line. And it's mainly because you're building yourself up to be a certain kind of person. If you are building yourself up and you are focused on yourself and you're not trying to go from relationship to relationship or to girl to girl or to you're trying to just hook up or anything like that, you're ultimately going to get to a better place in which you're going to have so many options, like seemingly, that you don't really know what to do with. And the way that I say seemingly, the reason for that is because a lot of the times you you may seem like you have the pick of the litter when you get to a certain point. But a lot of the times these women that are coming after you, you know, sometimes a slut is just a slut. Okay, and she's gonna try to be with as many guys as she can, and she why wouldn't why wouldn't a woman like that want someone like you, you know, that's on your grind, that's disciplined, that's resourceful, that's doing what he needs to do, you know, every kind of woman wants someone like that, but they don't know how to keep it, and they don't necessarily want to keep it. They just want the status that comes with it. Whereas a motherly woman who is not a slut. She's going to be somebody that you can rely on that actually wants to have a family because I've met women out there like that. Women do do want this. And uh, before I go any further, if my voice is a little uh, raspy or anything like that, I apologize. I'm still getting over this uh, this dang sore throat. I have no other symptoms. I have no other symptoms. I don't have a fever or anything. I'm, I'm, I'm completely fine. But... Uh, just a sore throat. <laughs> it's just kind of weird. But uh, but anyway, and so what these women are going to try to do when you're on semen retention and you're realizing that the women that you're talking to are not necessarily the ones that you want anymore, it, it's because you're purifying yourself and it's because you're purifying your spirit. And every time that you purify your spirit and every time that you purify your yourself as a whole, you're, you're making better decisions, you're making more of a long-term based decision making. And I try not to make too many decisions every day. You know, I, I usually try to eat the same things almost every day and I, I wear similar clothes every single day. I don't try to be too, too fancy, but I still wanna be, you know, stylish and represent myself and express myself, but I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be something I'm not, and I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, super luxurious or anything like that. And so I try to make a lot of small decisions or a lot of, or a few big decisions every day. If I'm going to make a lot of small decisions, I'm going to leave my big decisions later on. And the reason for this is because sometimes what people don't understand is decision making will definitely influence how you perceive the world. And so a lot of the times, these men that get involved with women that are Jezebel spirits or narcissistic women, and they they start to see the true colors of the woman, you know, they've got the fluoride eyes, you can see their their eyes are just, they have color, but they don't have light. And uh, you got to be mindful of that, you've got to be weary of that. And if a woman like that, you're dealing with and you don't necessarily notice it up until you're on semen retention or anything like that. Well, then that's a sign that, well, number one, you're obviously going, growing closer to the most high. And that's really what this whole semen retention journey is about, right? The whole semen retention journey is about 
getting closer to the Most High. It's not necessarily about, you know, finding a woman or creating a relationship with a woman. That's just kind of a, a great byproduct if that happens to you. And I just cannot tell you, though, how many times I've I've seen these people that are just starting on semen retention and they're starting to realize all of these poor decisions that they made. And it's like, well, yeah, you need to cut down your decision making, brother. You need to cut down your decision making. You start to make a few decisions that are really big, that are really good for you, or make a little bit more of small decisions that are not going to affect you as much in the long term, but are still going to be better decisions. And so these kinds of decisions can be like, you know, eating healthier, going to the gym and doing different things at the gym and trying to build muscle or trying to, and I'm not saying that life is about getting the gains or, or the muscle, right? But you do want to be strong. You do want to make sure that you're not just doing it for aesthetics. You're actually doing this because you want to be strong and you want to have the endurance and the fortitude of mind so that when you're tempted, then you'll be able to see through the temptations and move to some better place. So with semen retention, and when I say change your woman, what I mean by that is you need to actually change, change your kind of woman. Like if you're attracted to these Jezebel types of women and you don't really know why, like I've got so many emails from people in the past and we're like, man, this woman's a narcissist or a Jezebel, but man, the, the sex is just too good. I cannot let go of it. And this was like a year or so ago. And I remember telling this guy, I was like, dude, like if you if you are so uh, caught up in the sexual activity of this woman because she just gives you good sex, that you cannot see the other red flags around you, you've got some inner work to do, brother. You've got some inner work to do and you've got to grow closer to the most high because it's no, there's no way that you should be able to see the red flags and yet still be bonded to this kind of woman. That's either a trauma bond or you're codependent. And if you're in a trauma bond with a woman, which I've been in a trauma bond with a narcissistic woman in the past, and man, I'll tell you, that was breaking that bond was... It was, it felt like I was literally breaking a piece of my soul off and throwing it into the ether. And really it was just letting go of the parasite <laughs> that was stuck to me, spiritually speaking. It was, it was weird because I felt as if this woman who was a spiritual parasite, a spiritual energy vampire, she was almost like a part of me so much like she had attached her energy onto me so much that getting her off of my spirit was almost as if I was I was breaking off of myself when in reality it's not what it was at all it's not what it was in the slightest and so what I was able to do and this was year and that was years ago too but um that was probably when I was uh 22, 23, and uh, I was, I'm 28 now, so it was about six years ago, maybe, or so, and when I finally started to let go, I, I started to find, like, this part of myself that I didn't know could actually grow, because she had latched on to, like, this part of my spirit that when it was finally off, it was almost like, you ever seen, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like this part of me just grew back that I had no clue could grow. And so I realized then that there was a lot of unnecessary suffering in that kind of relationship. And this happened, like it took me a couple years to, to break these kinds of patterns. And this is another thing that you're going to have to have patience with yourself. You have to recognize that these kinds of breaking the patterns and changing the woman, like, I mean that. You got to change the kind of woman. You, you got to learn how to love what is good for you, right? You've got to learn how to love a motherly woman. Because a lot of the times a motherly woman, she's a nurturer. She's somebody that wants to nourish your soul. And it's not quite as exciting 
as the uh you know the the sex demon <laughs> right like she, the sex demon is really exciting and that's why a lot of these kinds of men they get so enthralled with the sex that they cannot let go of how how to move forward without that kind of thing again and they want that again but in a motherly woman and that, I'll tell you right now that's just not going to be the case but I will say that you'll be able to you'll be able to I, I'm just going to say this plainly you'll be able to train this woman that is motherly to be the kind of partner I don't like using the word partner but mate let's say mate you can train this woman this motherly kind of woman to be the kind of mate that you want in in the bedroom and you know i'm not saying that you should go out and start just ha having sexual intercourse with the woman that you think is motherly because like i said this is going to be a process you're going to have to go through like a series of purifications and you have to be going through the fire of refinement in order to get on the other side and you can actually see clearly what these kinds of women are you know, there was a time for a couple of years there after that, when I was 22, 23. And finally, where that when I was 25, I met this other woman who was older than me and she had a full fledged family. I've talked about this before on my channel, but for anybody that isn't aware, you know, I met that woman and it took me like months after that to really mourn what I thought women really were. I, I was mourning what I believed women to be. And the reason that I was mourning that was because I realized just how wrong I was about the way that women naturally operate. And I'm not saying that there's not motherly women out there, but I'm saying that a lot of these women out here, they're not putting God first. They're not putting Yeshua first. They're not putting the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments in a part of their life. They're just not. And it's only going to be a woman that can do that, that can actually provide that kind of healing or nurturing that you might actually need. Because a lot of the times, these men also, once they go through the sex demon stuff, <laughs> they go to look for these motherly women. But in these motherly women, they look for their mom. They don't look for a, a motherly woman that could be the mother of their children someday. They look for a mom. And that's where you got to be careful as well because you got to be make sure that you are leading the relationship. Okay, you are the man in this relationship. And it's okay to mourn what you thought women were. It's okay to, uh, to maneuver differently out here. But what's not okay is to treat your romantic mate as as somebody that is going to be a mom to you. I do not think that's acceptable. I don't think it's acceptable at all. And the reason that I think that is because I have yet to see where a relationship is treated that way and it ends on positive terms. I've yet to see that. I could be wrong, but I doubt it. <laughs> I, d I, don't think, I'm, I don't think I'm wrong about this. Because I've lived 28 years and I've seen all this stuff and I've seen what happens. And so anytime though, the, the, the main point I want to hit home in this video is that whenever you are experiencing unnecessary suffering with a woman, the number one thing you should do, in my opinion, is to move on. Like, just move on. Now, I'm not saying that a shit test here and there is going to be a big issue because you got to know that a woman needs to know how to vet. You know, that's, you got to know that a woman is capable of vetting a man herself. Because if a woman doesn't know how to shit test me properly, that tells me that she doesn't know how to vet for a man. And, and, a, and a lot of the men out here will say, whoa, well, well, imagine, imagine thinking shit tests are, or necessary or real like a, a part of relationships you think they're not you think they're not you know and then you hear people be like well where the, where's your girlfriend at where where's your wife at look i've got people that are doing that i'm doing work with around the world that are in successful relationships right now that they're ever growing more closer to each other 
And it's because they're actually doing the work in the relationship and we're able to talk through certain things in the consultations to where we can help them. So the results really speak for themselves, all right? And you can take this or not. Like, you don't have to listen. <laughs> you don't have to listen to me. Uh, that's really what's funny about posting these kinds of videos, you know, is a lot of people will get so in their feelings so quick and they don't listen. Like, if they get in their feelings, they just want to, ah, nah, keyboard warrior comes out, man. The keyboard warrior comes out. And it's like, are you listening or are you just reacting? Are you responding or are you reacting? And I can tell. Like, I can tell based off of the energy. You know, when I read through the comments or whatnot, I can tell whether or not this is a, this is a comment that is reflective and responsive versus reactive. All right. So with all that being said, I hope this message was useful and insightful. You know, this is just going to be part of the semen retention journey that you're going to have to walk on. And this is part of the purification process. And getting rid of the unnecessary suffering and making sure that your peace and your happiness is the most important thing that you protect, I think is the way to go. So with all that being said, I hope this message was useful and insightful. And until next time, peace be with you.